afternoon. Welcome to the Theotrade Afternoon Video. I'm Blake Young. Today is April 18th, 2024, and today we're going to talk about watching bonds and ignoring DR's guidance. So DR Horton reported last night and reported their earnings. Earnings beat expectations quite sizably. In fact, as we look at the, the reaction, it is a little bit surprising the reaction has been less than stellar. As we look at the numbers, DR Horton reported that they made 352, 45 cents better than analyst estimates of 307. In addition to that, the quarterly revenues came in at 9.1 billion and they were only expected to make 8.15. So they made nearly a billion dollars more than estimates. In addition to making over a billion dollars more, they guided higher. So the analysts were expecting guidance in the next quarter to uh, increase, but now they're even predicting a greater increase by about another one or two percent. In response, the stock gap from 145 all the way up to start today near 154, touching over 140, 54.26, and fading all the way back down, almost completely engulfing the previous day's action and filling the gap. So the market evidently doesn't really think that their guidance is good or that we don't think that we're going to have a quarter that's going to outperform what has already been a stellar outperformance from DR Horton. Does this mean there's going to be more of a weighing down of expectations for home builders? And if so, why? And clearly one of the biggest things that we expect is it's coming from bonds. So let's take a look at bonds and then we're going to come back and look at home builders themselves. But looking at bonds, let's start with the ZN. Yesterday, the market was a buzz about bonds bouncing and climbing up higher and the dip in yields. And that hope, that expectation pushed equities higher, pushed the dollar lower. Bonds went up, yields went down, and the market was excited. Well, today we've erased most of that. You can see that we've moved right back down. ZN is pushing lower and is in a downtrend, as we brought up earlier in the main room. If we look at the 10-year Treasury yield using this TNX CGI, you'll see that that rate is pushing back to near this year highs and all the way back into October, November last year. My expectation still remains that we're going to go back and retest about 5%, the high of the year, which means lending is going to be seven, seven and a half percent for mortgages. New home construction is going to have to deal with higher rates, both in higher yields and higher mortgage rates, higher borrowing costs and of commodities. So lumber supplies and other things. So costs have gone up and therefore the cost of the homes that they're building costs more and the home borrowers are going to have a harder time getting the loans at these higher, higher rates. So what does that mean? As we look at ITB, which is a home builders ETF, you can see it looks almost identical to DR Horton, obviously a little bit less dramatic because it's a bunch of stocks rather than just DR Horton, but it is reflecting the same gap up, close down, filling that gap. This is appearing to be a downtrend as we've eliminated all the price action going back into February and the pressure could be on to continue to slide. If yields remain high or continue to climb, meaning bond prices continue to slide, if there's no demand for U.S. bonds and we see those continue to drop, then home builders are going to continue to struggle because borrowers will not borrow at these very, very high rates. If we look at the individual stocks, there's opportunity in here for both bearish trades and bullish trades. As we're looking at both types of trades, we want to look at maybe the fundamentals, the core behind it. So what I did is I put together some quick analytics. Now, I normally I'd look for cash flow and some other things, but where home builders are leveraged up in a very expensive product, I'm very interested in their inventory turnover, their book value as far as what they can handle and their quick ratio. How fast can they manage their debt if they don't get to include the inventory sales? So a couple of things you might notice. We're gonna start with DR Horton since they reported first. And DR Horton, you can see they have earnings per share of 13, which is fine, it's good. And the return on equity is 21. So they're making good money on their, their equity. Their book value is solid. They have some room to move. Their inventory turnover 1.13 means that they they sell all their inventory in about just shy of a year. So they turn over the inventory of 90% of the year passes by and they can sell it. If you look at that compared to Toll Brothers right next to it, you'll see that that is not as good for Toll Brothers, that they take a little bit longer to be able to 
sell their inventory. In other words, they only turn over their inventory of their homes they've built 0.8% of the year. And so that means it's taking them about a year and a third to be able to turn over their inventory. What we're looking at is anything that is near one means that they build a home and sell a home in roughly one year. Anything that's bigger than one means that they are turning over the homes in less than a year. Anything smaller than one says that they are taking longer than a year to build the home and sell the home. So as we look at that, we look at the leverage, we look at the leverage of the company, the long-term debt to capital. And what we're looking for is we're looking for these numbers to show whether they have stability. And we could also look at their financial leverage, which is their assets to uh, shareholders equity. We want a higher number on the financial leverage. We want a lower number on the long-term debt to capital. So as we're looking at those numbers, again, they're pretty close to each other. We're not really seeing anything outstanding on the financial leverage. It's really the inventory turnover and, and whether or not they can meet their debt situation if they can't sell the homes. Everybody that's below a one on quick ratio says that they need to sell inventory to meet the debt obligations they have this year. They need to sell some inventory. Current ratio is all of their assets meeting their current obligations. Stuff over one, like KBH and Lennar, as you can see over there, tells you that they don't have to sell inventory to be able to survive this next year. So KBH and Lennar are more stable as companies. So DR Horton sells off and goes back to its lows. If I'm looking at this as saying, you know what, they're outperforming, they still have good numbers, that's probably telling of the entire financial markets as far as the home builders especially, that we're stable and that we're gonna see, still see some growth, especially if the billion dollars more in revenues. Well, we might expect positive news to come out for Toll Brothers, KBH, Pulte Homes, and Lennar. And so as we're watching that, I would say, bet on those that have the ability to meet all their obligations without needing to use their inventory, such as KBH and Lennar. They have a quick ratio over one. And if we look up there and look at their book value, KBH has a book value of 50, Lennar has a book value of 95. And so even if they got in significant trouble, Lennar has a lot of book value and has the best quick ratio. So it looks pretty decent that you might want to be looking for bullish positions on KBH and Lennar, while you also might be looking at something more bearish on Toll Brothers, where they have the slowest turnover and the worst quick ratio. So let's take a look at Toll Brothers, and then I'll come back and show you one other stock. Toll Brother has earnings on May 28th, so we have a few weeks that you could set up a potential trade here. But we've already reacted to DR Horton. We gapped up, but we didn't even clear the recent highs. It's already bearish and it's filled that gap and gone back to the low. So I do think this is a better opportunity for a short position or a bearish position, maybe selling calls, selling call verticals, and participating in the move at least down to 107, if not back near 100. So Toll Brothers is definitely being weighted down. And even if DR Horton outperformed, the fact that they did not benefit from that outperformance, Toll Brothers are less likely to outperform at that magnitude. So we will likely see worse performance in Toll Brothers, continuation downtrend, and especially if rates are continuing to go higher because they are already not turning over their inventory and they already don't have the assets to meet their debt obligations in the short term. So Toll Brothers looks like a nice short bearish position for me. Now, if we go over and look at Lennar, if we want to bet on a bullish move, we're gonna look at Lennar and say, yep, we gapped up and traded back just like DR Horton, but we did not fill the gap just like DR Horton. If we're going to see it hold support through here, this is the one that I'd say sell puts or sell put verticals down near 147.50 for the opportunity to see if it's going to bounce and continue to go higher. And if they outperform like DR Horton, this may have been all the negative that it's going to price in. Looking out a month, you could sell a short put or a naked put for May 17th, about a month's worth of time, and collect a premium of about 2.75% for something at the money. Their earnings are coming up as well, since it is earnings season. Their earnings are coming up, but not until June. 
So June 12th, you could probably do this twice, selling puts down through here, collecting 2.75% and being willing to own it near 150 or 147.50. And that's where I'd set up Lennar. But what I didn't cover is kind of a subtle one, the one that we don't normally talk about as a home builder. It's not usually one that I put on my list. And that is NVR. Now NVR uh, operates under Ryan Homes, NV Homes, Heartland Homes. Uh, they, they do a lot of starter homes or first time home buyers or, or uh, move up type buyers. And they do a lot of mortgages and mortgage loan closings, but they also turn around and sell those mortgages on the secondary market. Uh, a lot of back east home construction. So if you're from the east coast, you might have heard of, of NVR. But NVR is outperforming all of them as far as the reaction to, to DR Horton. And if you look at the fundamentals, let me zoom back over here and let me show you what this looks like. I'll make a quick comparison to almost every stat that NVR has compared to even DR Horton or even Lennar, Lennar who's outperformed. Earnings per share, $463 earnings per share. Book value, 1,366. And maybe the numbers are off here, but this is what is being reported on their financials. If you look at return on equity, they're making the highest return on each. If we look down lower, look at their their uh, financial leverage, their assets to equity is uh, is good. But this is the this is the kicker. Their quick ratio is better than Lennar. Their current ratio is right there in the mix. Their earnings per share is just crushing it. Their book value is crushing it. And so you have a stock that is significantly outperforming across the board. Now, this is a very expensive stock. So when we look at book value of 1,366 per share, compare that to the fact that it's a $7,000 stock. It's harder to trade because the bid and the ask is fairly wide, but it is a $7,716 stock. So as you're looking at this, this is interesting to see such a high flyer and outperformer. When we get into the ratios, it is significantly better than the rest. This is the reason why we don't normally look at it as such an expensive stock. And what I'm looking at is not the saying that you, there's no options on this either. So you would be needing to go in and simply buy a very expensive stock to be able to participate here. But it is fascinating to me to see the inventory turnover. They are turning over the inventory 3.77 times a year. So nearly every home is turned over in three months. That's how fast they are turning over their inventory. It's very significant and a very strong stock, a very stable stock, high return on equity, the highest return on equity of all the home builders. And kind of attractive. If this is something that could fit into your longer term investment portfolio and where you're not trying to manage it day to day, there could be some opportunity in something like this. Today alone, it was up 0.63 while the rest of the home builders pulled back to near term support. All of this depends on whether those rates continue to move up. If the rates continue to move up, even Lennar and NBR, I would say be careful with. But if we see those rates continue to climb, we definitely want to be looking at continued bearishness on Toll Brothers, bearishness on Pulte, and even to DR Horton. Sell the weak stocks. Sell options in a bearish fashion on the weak stocks if yields keep climbing. If you see that the yields hit a top and pull back, then all of them could be opportunities to buy a bounce, but I would still lean to the strongest of the strong, which means I'd be looking at NVR, Lennar, and KVH. And remember, there's always the choice. Remember, there's always the choice to come back and just trade ITB or XHB because those do have options. And if we are going to see this gap protected at 105, we could sell calls or call verticals at 105 and buy a vertical out at 106 for a dollar wide spread currently on something like ITB, you're getting paid 40 cents for a dollar wide spread by selling the call vertical up here. And that could be a pretty decent opportunity to collect 40 cents for 60 cent risk. It is a 66% return on risk for a one month trade to sell call verticals. And if we continue to see the weakness in the housing market and rising yields, that would likely see ITB continue to slide lower. If you want to take a directional trade, it should, uh, be good to notice as well that your current implied volatility is up at about 56%. So you may want to use those short call verticals to help pay for a long put in that scenario. All right, that's going to do it for me today. Have a fantastic day. We'll look forward to talking to you again next week.